I was on a program with um, uh, with Lynn Johnson and Chris Lynn Johnson, who does better or and or for worse, better or for worse, and uh, Chris Brown, who does Hager the Horrible, and Jim Davis, who does of course Garfield. And um, the lady had asked us why we all got into this field. I got into it because I stuttered. I had a terrible stutter. Jim Davis had a terrible stutter. We all got into it from, not from strength, but from kind of a weakness. And then we turn our weakness into a strength, which I thought was really kind of fascinating. But I was this weird little kid. Um, I had this terrible stutter. Uh, it wasn't a stammer. It was more, it wasn't a, uh, 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 it, it wasn't like that. It was more of a, uh, like this. So I started drawing cartoons. Um, uh, it was a great way to meet girls. Uh, it, it was probably the only way for me to meet girls is, is I would do my little drawings and then I'd give it to a girl, you know, and she, oh, thank you, and you know, like this. And, and then she'd say, what's your name? And I'd go, you know, and then, yeah, yeah, yeah. So my mom, God love her, uh, she took me, uh, she had me, um, uh, she didn't think I was growing up properly, uh, you know, as, as a male. So she uh, sent me to an all-boys Catholic, um, an all-boys Catholic military high school. Um, it was an all-boys Catholic military high school. It was a Christian school for the criminally insane. You know, these were, it was called CBC. We literally had, had, a, um, had those little scapulas, you know, that... Um, uh, that Catholics would wear, and, and, and they had a picture of Jesus on this side and then George Patton on the other. You know, it was this love-hate thing, you know. You love them and then shoot them, kind of. And we learned how to use military weapons and stuff. I would go into the men's uh, boys' room. I don't know if you've ever been in a boys' room at an all-boy Catholic military high school, but it gets kind of raunchy, and, and, uh, and all the kids always draw in the stalls. You know, you always draw naked ladies and stuff like that. So I, I, I would draw a naked lady, you know, or whatever, you know, and then, and then underneath it, I'd sign my name, Mike Peters, you know. <laughs> my mom even had me join the CBC. She wanted me to get in front of people. And so she had me join the CBC cheerleading team. And it was all, all boys, of course. It was all boys school. But most of the cheerleaders, uh, they wanted to get um, as close to, you know, girls as possible. So they got cartoonists, you know, and artists uh, to be the cheerleaders, you know. And so, uh, uh, and, and, and so they would get me on top of this 12-man this, uh, this pyramid, and I would have this megaphone, and I would say to the, I would get in front of a thousand kids, and I'd go, uh, give me a sida, 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 C, you know? And then all these kids would go, sida, 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 C. And it became the stuttering cheer of CBC, and it's still in their cheerleading book. Oh, about... Uh, Oh, 15, 20 years later, I mean, I graduated from, I mean, they let me out of that school, and then I went to Washington University in St. Louis, and um, I came in there as, a, as an artist uh, to the art school, and I had a portfolio that was like a 30-year-old. Um, uh, I had been doing cartoons for my school paper and for other papers around town, uh, local community papers, as a high school kid. I was doing little editorial cartoons. About 15 or 20 years after I graduated from that school, I had won a couple of awards and stuff, and, and so the school asked me, CBC asked me to come back and to be given an honorary thing. They were gonna put me in their Hall of Fame, you know. So I go back to St. Louis, I was living in Dayton, I go back to St. Louis, and I, um, and, and I was, stayed at my mom's house, and I was trying to figure out what I would do when I go and speak to these people tonight because there are a lot of the alums and all my a bunch of my teachers were still there. And so I said, why don't I relearn how to draw their caricatures and then I could do my cartoons in front of them, but they can't get mad and send me home because I'm an adult now. You know, they can't say, no, we don't like, you know, they, they can't throw me out. I, I'm not there anymore. I got my yearbooks that were at my mom's house in the attic and I started reading the yearbooks. And it's so funny when you're reading yearbooks that you haven't seen in like, in like 20 years, or like a time capsule. And I started reading the things that kids wrote to you, you know, 20 years ago, you know. And I found this picture of a guy named Mr. Morgan. And Mr. Morgan was my um, English teacher in senior year. And Mr. Morgan didn't like me. I found his picture and underneath it, I had obviously given him this photo, I mean, this, this book to kind of, um, um, you know, to sign, uh, autograph, you know, my yearbook. 
which showed how stupid I was because the guy didn't like me. I mean, you know, hello, Mr. Morgan, you know. And uh, underneath it, he wrote really something prophetic because that night I was going to be given this award at this old high school. He said, Dear Mr. Peters, you had better start growing up real soon because remember, you can't always draw a cartoon. When you, when you are a political cartoonist, you know, caricatures are your stock and trade. That's what you're supposed to do. So what you try to do with a caricature is you try to see one or two features in a person's face that are a little unusual, and then you just accentuate that unusualness. If you're a little odd looking, it's wonderful. It makes it a terrific caricature. And indeed, if you're ugly, it's a great thing. Caricaturists love this. Well, I think our our, our country has been blessed with some of the ugliest presidents any country has ever had. I didn't realize when I was starting to draw Bob Dole a couple of years ago, you know, and when he first started running, that this is, um, that looks like Bob Dole, but it's, but it's not. This is, this is going to be Mr. Mr. Nixon. Here's his little bags underneath here. It still looks like Bob Dole. So where most people would have kind of necks that came down like this and then shoulders that go like that, uh, Nixon's shoulders would start about here, you know, <laughs> you know, it was not Nixon until you put his shoulders right about there and then he was kind of Dick Nixon, you know. When Amy was in the White House, um, she had a little, um, a little skinny, skinny face like this and, um, and she had blonde hair, she had blonde hair and it was long and straight, straight blonde hair like that. Then you knew that she was a Carter, you know, you know, <laughs> wonderful. Wonderful teeth, wonderful teeth, you know. His mouth would come down like this, and then he would have these kind of liver lips like this, you know, and then cheeks that would come down like that. But then when he would smile, you know, all of this would come all the way up. I mean, you know, come all the way up. And then when he was really, really happy, you know, he had a whole other set down here, you know. It's just just kept going. I mean, the guy, the guy was fabulous, you know. We, we, just, we, we just loved him. This is Jimmy Carter at the age of 99, and you just take his famous smile and you put it in a big glass of water. <laughs> See? 